Hi, this is Jake from EduCoin going live with their very first uh, founders vlog. Um, I know I haven't done one of these before, but figured it might be cool just to kind of let every no one know some company updates and tell some funny anecdotes from the founding of the company. I think people like to hear startup content, so figured it would make us a little bit more personable and uh, help us, you know, to kind of tell our vision and get it out there. So. Um, couple company updates. We are going live with our first product. Um, in the upcoming weeks here, we have a few pilot schools signed on. Um, not going to disclose who they are uh, in this video, but uh, super excited to share uh, if they are success and consent. So um, super excited that we can see actual students and teachers processing badges, sharing content um, through our platform, um, mostly using a test net, but potentially using Polygon as well. So. Um, that's kind of on the product front. What we've been pushing towards is just getting the product in a stable enough position where it could be used in a classroom setting. Um, again, completely free, just kind of putting it out there to more than anything, just have a D app that a student can use and kind of um, make it more normalized. Maybe use blockchain tech in the classroom and not that it has to be a super expensive art transaction or a, a game. Um, get people used to having a wallet, get people used to transacting. Um, with this different database format and showing that can be kind of not so different than what they do now, but have some massive benefits. So um, that's a that's a company wide update, finishing up some programs here and super excited to kind of go into the summer and really with our heads all set on September and the fall semester. Um, one funny anecdote that I did want to share today and that I figured people would appreciate is the story of how asking an engineer to change a color on a website could have potentially large implications. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna share the screen of our website, um, just to give you some context here. Um, as you can see on the left-hand side, uh, we have a, you know the join now button. As you scroll down, there's different panels on the website, white, blue, black down here. Um, this is actually a custom home screen. We're not using like a web flow or, um, you know, like a Squarespace or something like that. And I have a lot of thoughts about that. I'll revisit later, but the story really relates to the fact that um, getting the colors on these panels set up was something the design team really wanted. Uh, we had this you know, beautiful Figma layout um, where, you know, what should be the text color overlays, how the panels blue, white, all these things should set up. And me as the founder, you know, we made a push to get this home screen done maybe in less than a week. You know, uh, the old version of the home screen was literally just um, like three pictures and some text. So all of this was essentially new and built out in less than a week, which is just great work on our devs part. But uh, at one point I remember asking one of the devs like, hey, can't you change this blue to be black and maybe shift over the words? And I, I swear it nearly sunk um, our whole relationship because it, for me, it seemed like such a small ask, you know, designer and Figma, you just kind of click it, you know, change the design palette or the color palette and, and it'll update and positioning is so easy. It snaps in place for you. It's easy to do verticals. But once you get into CSS and the front end development of this and making it adaptable so that as you go small and big and use different monitors, it really can be kind of quite um, tedious to do these small changes. Um, especially, you know, if you're using custom elements as opposed to like a bootstrap or something, which which we mostly use. So, um, yeah, I remember asking you that and you oh, that should be no problem. You know, it should take like four minutes to change the color, right? You just change one line of code that says blue to black. And it became, <laughs> became like a multi-hour frustration. In fact, even getting some of the simple elements on here to, to be live um, were quite the hurdles. So this is more of a lesson. Um, I I'm actually a, a UX researcher and designer by trade, just to my fellow designers and researchers. I know there's things like Zeppelin out there and other tools that help you kind of prepackage the front end, but custom CSS is hard. It, making it adapt is hard. Any sort of picture or color element you had definitely has implications on the spacing and um, even simple things like a rounded edge versus square um, can really impact uh, what how much work needs to be put into that. So. Just a note to founders out there that are non-technical or even designers, you probably like me, have some level of tech competence, but don't quite um, like live and breathe it. Uh, just, just something to kind of consider moving forward. Maybe run it by the dev and don't just throw it at them because they're going to say want to say yes and they're going to want to get it done, especially if they're ambitious like our devs. But you know, it it can't always um, 
be so easy. And you sometimes should weigh out like, wow, did they really spent, you know, a few hours getting this button square where that could have been a whole new, another page. Um, and really what, how much does that impact the user experience? Start kind of weighing dev lift in terms of user experience, because at a startup, you know, you don't have a limited dev time and talent and you don't have a user base that'll be patient. So that was a fun clip of the week. Uh, happy to kind of talk more about that, but as a UX design researcher, um, I've always kind of just thrown the ticket over to like a PM or a, uh, like a technical team. So run like being heavily ingrained in one now, it's, it's been quite the experience. Um, as far as other realizations we've had, other updates, I, I think that it is interesting kind of doing a custom front end and, and as well as the back end. I think that when you use a web flow or you see a lot of these web three sites that look really beautiful and modern, I think that sometimes thinking through scale and usability at scale is something that gets overlooked. It's really hard to build a functional product that kind of fits nicely into these prepackaged web flows and these like no code solutions. I think at a certain point, it's great for investment, but do you have to like, do you accrue a bunch of tech debt? We're essentially gonna have to redo this all later, redesign all later with these constraints in mind or with, um, you know, winks in mind. So I, I think that that's one thing that I've really noticed too recently is that like as a UX developer or designer, uh, sorry, I would not call myself a UX developer, designer and CEO now. I, I think that um, being patient with these custom components and understanding really how these custom components come to life um, and the challenges associated with different asks, whether it's like an interaction or something like that, you know, it's, it, a lot of these things are just easier to design in a tool than to put into a production environment that can handle a bunch of clicks, a bunch of traffic, a bunch of different screen types. Um, and something just to educate yourself on. And I think that sometimes, you know, even we have investors or product people come in and say, why does it look like this? Or, you know, they, they start to question me because they're like, I thought you were supposed to be a designer. And I'm like, well, I, you know, it's, it's easy to make something beautiful in Figma, but it's really hard to, to build it at scale. So um, that's just a little tangent. I had a little bit of food for thought. Um, besides that, really happy with how things are going along. And um, let me know if you like these educational vlogs or, <laughs> founder stories. I'll, I'll make sure to keep trying to keep them up to date. Thank you.